Hello everyone, welcome back to our Generative AI from Scratch series. So in the last video, we have covered some other areas of LLMs. Now we'll be moving ahead and then we'll be covering the LLM part. We'll be building our LLM. We'll use some pre-trained LLMs first. Okay, in this video, we'll be basically using the pre-trained LLMs. Okay, I'll show you different types of models that we have that we can use and uh, how we can generate different output with different models. Okay, after that, we'll be fine tuning LLMs and doing many things more. Okay, so let's move ahead and I'll show you how we can use pre trained LLMs. So, in this video, we'll be covering what pre trained models are and how Hugging Face Pipeline work. Okay, I'll be showing you some different examples of different models. And we'll be doing the text generation. We'll be doing the embedding. Okay, and then I will uh, let you know about the basics of prompt engineering because uh, when we'll be using any model like uh, the, in the text generation. So we need uh, to know uh, how we can provide the correct prompt. So the prompt is very crucial in that area when we are dealing with text generation or any kind of generation basically from a generative AI in a generative AI scenario prompt is very important and then we'll be covering the temperature top k top key these properties I'll let you know so what are pre-trained LLMs so imagine you have a robot with you okay and this robot can do the task like it can read million of books it can watch thousand of websites it can learn grammar knowledge <clears throat> coding and many other things so this robot model is called a pre-trained llm basically this model can learn the existing data if you provide some data to it it will learn that data it will not be able to discover new things it will not be able to auto correct himself whatever data you provide to him it will give you output from that data only out of that data, it will not be able to provide you uh, any information. So these are pre-trained LLMs uh, where we trained our models on the basis of some data. It could be a book, it could be a set of database, it could be uh, links of websites. Training these type of uh, models or LLMs uh, call a pre-training or we call them as pre-trained LLMs. Now, what is Hugging Face Pipeline? So by using these pipeline, we can uh, basically create our generator. Okay, we can use different models. So hugging pipeline, uh, hugging face pipeline already have all these model uh, within them. So hugging face pipeline has all those models that we'll be needing. Okay, uh, some of them are paid, some of them are of trial versions. Okay, so we in this tutorial we'll be using the free versions of those. Okay, and for corporate uh, use, uh, we'll, uh, we will be needing the paid ones uh, that serve the larger audience. Okay, and those are more, more reliable. So as I said, the pipelines are ready-made machines. You just need to provide them the instruction that this is the model I want. This is the operation that we want to perform. This is the parameter I want to pass. And on the basis of that, create a generator for me. Okay, and then it will give you generator. Okay, so if you want to generate text, use the text generation machine. If you want to do the embedding work, use the embedding machine. Okay, so you do not worry about wiring or electricity or anything. You just input your text and you get the output. So let's move ahead uh, towards the VS Code and then I'll show you uh, how we can uh, create different generators using the Hugging Face pipeline. So we are inside our VS Code and I've already moved inside my virtual environment. Okay, so first, uh, uh, when we want to work on Hugging Face Pipeline, there are some dependency that which we need to install in our system. Okay, so we will be installing transformers as we'll be create, uh, gen creating the generators of so transformer is required, torch is required, and then we'll be needing the accelerator. So I've added this command and started installing all those dependency uh, inside my virtual environment. So it will take some time. 
okay so all the dependencies are now installed okay so we'll be creating our first model we'll be using our first model which is gpt2 okay and this is the hugging face pipeline okay so we are using this pipeline basically directly importing uh, transformer from transformer we are importing the pipeline okay inside transformer we have this pipeline and the pipeline needs the action uh, what action we want to perform and the model we want to use and some other property if we want to pass there okay and then for example in this case we will be using the gpt model okay uh, which is a text generation model uh, okay and we have provided that we'll be doing the text generation operation for with the gpt model and uh, this pipeline method takes the these thing all these things and it returns us a generator okay so it created generator uh, using all this property now we have this generator this generator does just need your prompt then how you want that model to tackle that query what would could be the max length what could be the temperature temperature i'm uh, continuously telling you about this temperature property from past uh, different videos past many videos i am telling you about the temperature so the the value of the temperature is very crucial if it is high enough the model will provide very random and very aggressive output it will not follow the safe wordings okay it will be very creative very creative answer it can provide so it will not provide uh, us the safe answer it will be logical and it will be safer if we uh, take the temperature less but if the temperature is very high it will be very creative but it will not be a safe then simple uh, a simple example i have taken here so i'm just providing the prompt here once upon a time in a small village they lived a girl who loved ai one day okay and the generator will be uh, completing the sentence like in the pre trained models they do not have this capability they cannot create uh, data they cannot generate data by them they cannot complete incomplete things they will just provide you whatever is there uh, in their that in the database in their memory database they they have trained with uh, we have created uh, this generator we have executed this generator method and we'll get the output and output will be inside the first object okay uh, inside the generated text and so let me execute it so we have executed this file gpt model.py yeah so you can see that uh, we have just provided it a simple uh, small sentence and it completed it right so this is the one of the model uh, now let's move ahead and i'll show you the another model now the another one we have is the llama model okay so from the same pipeline um, now we'll be doing the same operation but now the model is changed and we are using the meta llama model the llama 3.21b this model we are using these are the three versions of model that we are using we are providing it the pair token id okay this is required in llama uh, this is used by the uh, transformer internally the neural network uh, to differentiate between the actual data and the uh, the padding so this helps uh, generating the same length data when it tokenized it or it split into different part in in the neural network so it helps in that so now same thing uh, it provided as the generator we have taken it as llama chat so and we are executing this method with same thing prompt length and temperature okay uh, and then it will uh, same it will be re returning as the response and then the that response will be printing so let us execute this one as well okay so we got some error and uh, 
uh, what is this error okay authorization okay we can't access so looks like this one is the paid one we will be needing token for it uh, let me replace it with different one okay so let me try the tiny llama this is the free one let me see if this works sorry okay so this one looks like this is working this is uh, so this one is doing some processing so let's wait for it to complete still processing 85 percent let's wait for some more time okay so the processing is 100 percent now Let's see if it complete our sentence. Yep. So it has completed this sentence. Uh, explain why the sky is blue in simple words. This is what we have asked him and it provided the answer. Blue is color that is made up of three primary colors and all when you miss two primary. So it didn't uh, move ahead because we made the temperature 0 0.5. If you increase it to 0 0.7, 8, 1, so it will be more creative. Okay, it will provide you more creative answer, but it can provide you anything. Okay, so it, it's kind of risky when you increase the temperature, but it will be very creative, very fast. So like uh, the chat, chat GPT was the uh, a short model where we can control the temperature, higher the temperature, more random the answer. Okay, so that was a larger model. On the other hand, Llama is a open source. This is a small kind of a model, okay, which is fast but small. And this is good for education or offline apps. Okay, then we have other models as well that Mistral uh, that we can use, but that are quite big in size and that those needs heavy processing. So your system needs to be happy for that. Okay, now comes the embeddings. What is embedding? So think of it as a, if I ask someone, any human, who is most similar to the word king. So they will say queen because they can relate king and queen easily. Okay, but machine does not relate like this. Machine always understands the word. Okay, so if we provide a word uh, to our model or machine uh, so that what is similar to the king. <clears throat> so basically internally what it will do, it will do the embedding of word king. Uh, like it will split them in a conceptual form that call embedding and creates a number for that uh, word king. And then compare it with the word that it has in its database or you can say it has in its memory which someone must have asked earlier or it has the data about it and it has the embedding for that word as well. So for example, the embedding for king is this and the embedding for queen is this and the embedding for a different apple uh, word or different other words, we have this embedding. So now it will compare the embeddings. So you, now you can see the king and queen has the very close embedding, okay. So that's why it will reach to a conclusion that yes, the most similar word to the king would be queen. Okay, so that's how embedding works internally. And the mini LM is a kind of a model that we that does this uh, embedding thing. Okay, we use this. It's called mini LM because it is much smaller. And it is very good at understanding meaning and very fast and processing. It, it does not require any GPU. Now let's understand about the basics of prompt. So what are good, better and best prompt? So the first example here is a basic prompt, which we say a good prompt. It will just saying the model explain like I'm a 10 year old, what a transformer is. So this is a good uh, uh, kind of prompt we can say which is just telling transformer what to do and how am I, how I am expecting the answer I am expecting the answer as a 10 year old so it will uh, provide you answer according to that but what would be the better way of giving a prompt is providing them 
in a different sentence. So each sentence should have one instruction. So now this prompt says you are a patient teacher. First, now explain what a transformer model is. Then use simple language and an example of real life. So I'm giving the instruction in a different, different sentence. So now it will read each sentence as a individual instruction and will provide output accordingly. So in this case, the output would be better than the previous prompt. Now the last one comes as the best way of giving the prompt. So now define everything, your instruction, what uh, the model should do, what should not do. So these kind of thing, you need to provide it everything, every detail. Okay, so the example is you are a teacher explaining transformer to a 10 year old. Use simple word, step by step explanation, one real life example, one small diagram. So in this way, I'm providing it every each detail that I need. I can also provide what not to do. Don't use this word, negative word, from this, uh, any political agenda kind of thing. We I do not want this. Okay. So that's how we can provide a better, a best prompt. Now controlling model behavior. So as I told you, we can control the model behavior by tweaking some property like temperature. We can give 0 0.1, which will be logical safe. If we increase it a little bit, it will be creative. If we increase it more, it will be very random. And then comes the top key value, which lim limits your vocabulary choices. If the value is smaller of this K, it will uh, provide the fewer words, but will, those words will be more focused. If you provide the higher value, it will be higher words, but not much focus to the topic. If the value of P is towards more towards one, it will consist of more variety in the answer. If the value of P towards zero, it will be of fewer options. So, yep, we covered uh, some pre-trained models. We have discussed about the embeddings. We have discussed about the prompts that we can provide. So, I think now we, have a, we are having the basic understanding of the LLMs model. Now, in the next video, we'll talk about how we can fine-tune our LLMs to generate different and better output of it. So, till then, see you. Bye-bye.